It always comes to this. guys back again to do another tattoo progress update today where i last left off i showed off uh my sleeve session with rick we did this uh ditch connecting area here again some in here and uh all these little suction cups along here that were kind of bugging me so um hoping that ends up about the same level as this it's kind of what the goal is with all of these layers now is to get it all to kind of this point and up to that level and better so yeah pretty short session that one no shock there rick and i fair, fairly often have short sessions so i think it was only like an hour an hour and a half something like that but whatever chipping away right i also had a uh session with terry last week where we um boldened the black that we had done around the roses and added some uh, bright red as well uh, uh, nebula red and the prior red was red velvet and that's what will be used for the bulk of the first round of background on my blackout suit um, it was a great red as a base and now we can kind of get in and add some dimension to it and contrast and um, play with light and dark and I still I still think it's a great background overall it's I always looked at this as more of like my uh, my red black so it was like it's still super dark and that was the goal um, but it's got a red back drop to it rather than a, like a, a blue base or a dark gray what, like you would get with a, a standard black so it was just about pulling things apart right and now uh, now that it's all settled in and it's all been there for a while um, it's just coming back and kind of um, uh, pulling things out of it and pushing things back and kind of playing with contrast levels, right? So um, With that I'll get into this last session I had with Terry here So you can see that the black that we did held up really well and uh, did exactly as I, ex I wanted and expected So this time we did it's a little hard to tell that it's been done because uh, bear in mind the blue tips on the roses were decent there was just a little bit more white showing through believe it or not the white that we covered um on my white on black version of these roses was harder to cover than the black was so for the people who think that covering with white first helps it's actually counterintuitive there's been a lot of people who have um kind of lobbed that at me like oh well if you cover it with a white layer first and then you come no because it just dulls everything you put into it because now not only are you mixing color with black you're mixing color with white that was you know previously black you're getting like this sort of compounding dulling result and it's not to say that you can't do it it's just it's not actually advantageous to do things this way you can find some colors that have white in them already that helps them go in over the black like this yellow which i'm going to get into in a minute and this uh uh, turquoise that we did not touch up that looks fresh still <laughs> um, but putting white in straight it's a very thick ink and it has a very defined clear presence of its own so when you do that everything that you put in subsequent comes down or muddies up a shade so you, like this purple for example was a bastard and it's still you can see and and it doesn't bother me and we're leaving the purple for now um, you can still see some white stripping through that purple and that's been passed twice you can't really see as much black stripping through it the red for example and again we wanted this red in the roses to be fairly dark anyway so um yeah just a little quick note on that so uh we did the blue tips on the roses again and they were actually done um with two different colors of blue and it, it won't look like that unless you're looking close at it and that's kind of the 
the idea with it. You can see it actually, believe it or not, more in the top rows here. And so we have a light, light blue in what's called uh, mist blue fusion. Again, all the color inks we use at the shop here are fusion inks. And the the mist blue is almost a white blue. So it's it's very, very faint. It's it's not the same faint that we used for my back that didn't work that I ruled out that uh, ice blue. That one's, uh, we're probably never gonna use that one again. Even on negative space, I don't like that one. I seen uh, Ash and one of the other artists here at the shop struggling to put that shit in over um, negative space. So I think that that's not a problem of, that doesn't work well for black ink cover-ups. I think it's just not good at all. <laughs> And the good ones are good for both. The good ones will work on cover-ups and otherwise. So we've ruled that one out, but that blue mist did pretty good. And this is a, another reason why I always tell you guys the important thing isn't to listen to me and use the exact inks I've used. It's The important thing is to be open to trying other inks because now, as I've just told you, we have one ink of the same color that did what we wanted it to as another of basically the same color didn't do so blue mist and ice blue are basically exactly the same color it's just the different pigments or the different uh, ingredients that are in that ink interacts better with the skin than whatever the fuck's in that ice blue and I wouldn't have known that if I wasn't willing to experiment right if I because like Someone might have gone, oh no, we've tried that color already, it doesn't work, we're not trying that color anymore. But what's logical is to go, oh, but these are two different bottles of ink, and they probably have two different ingredient lists, right? And there's probably some slight different pigments in there, and it's worth a shot. And so, having done that, we found one that works quite nice. And in contrast to uh, the blue sky that's in there, um, that we already know is good you get more of a dynamic light source so these are the little things that i nerd out on that most people don't give a fuck about most people just want to buy a cool sleeve whereas like i'm acutely interested in um pulling and pushing things apart and creating all kinds of contrast layers that are not necessarily detectable from um the naked eye or from afar but under an appreciation or a examined eye you'll see all different things happening and you can create um, more dimension with that right so i feel like when you're working over top of any cover-up you have to really think about like depth and dimension and uh, movement and things like this contrast clarity a lot more than you do with a normal tattoo and when you're in color you have that at your disposal more as a baseline because the minute you commit to full color, it's like all of the options that you've just opened up can help you make the tattoo better, right? The minute there's no limiters on it, it's like, okay, well, if I put this color with this color, I pull this thing forward, push this thing backwards. Like, for example, uh, originally in both the black and gray and full color versions of this rose sleeve, the, the thorns were primarily left in the background and now they're definitely more in the foreground than they were. But because we changed the whole thing and, and where everything is and the depth of the roses and things like this, um, it makes more sense to have them come forward now, especially when we created the movement of the bright red behind them, it pushes them out more. So then it makes more sense to have uh, the thorns be highlighted and showcased in this composition rather than having them be in the background as uh, kind of like just a texturing element. Now they're part of the foreground. And uh, they look a hell of a lot more defined and realistic this way as well. Because we had that base of brown and yellow in there established already, and yes, there is brown on black in this, believe it or not, or brown on white and black on black. Um, we did not have to go in to all of it and make it all super bright. Um, for reference, all the yellow was passed again, but we used a medium tone yellow, uh, I believe it's mustard yellow over there, for 
most of the thorns, and then in the high points of the thorns, we have an atomic yellow. Again, these are all fusion inks. And doing it that way, we were able to create almost like a white highlight. Um, clearly, it's not white, but it, it, it comes across as, as your white highlight, right? Your super bright. And having those highlights in there pulls and pushes things back, right? The brown is now the darkest point and the atomic yellow being the brightest point and then the mustard yellow being um, the mid-tone. We have clear movements. Uh, we understand that the points of the thorns are coming forward and uh, the darkest points are, are the farthest back. I'm only going so far into this today because sometimes I gloss over all of these things and these are things that I look at in all tattoos, and sometimes when I'll critique things on Remy Reacts, th these things color my opinions on them as well. Because you do see a lot of artists that, whether it's that they're lazy artists or that their client is impatient, you don't see a lot of um, attention to detail this way. And uh, I, don't, I think it's also a fact that a lot of people don't really care about those things, but they do upgrade a whole sleeve well they'll upgrade the entire piece if you have a mind for uh you know where w what is happening in the flow of the thing right where is the light source you know um where what's sitting in front of what all of that stuff when you do those things it upgrades the entire look of the tattoo and it's not necessarily something that everyone will even be able to dis to say why it's just something that the eye recognizes and the mind doesn't necessarily fill in the, the reasoning for that. It's just when things are working in good order and then they make more sense and like something happens in our eye just kind of picks that up. So with all that said, I have to come up next week and do the exact same thing that I've done to this sleeve as this sleeve has been completely redone again in just a matter of two weeks. The only thing that wasn't done was the purple and the dark red and the rose. And uh, we still have to do the hand. We did the hand blue, but I want to do more spider webs, as I've mentioned in a prior video. And uh, we have to redo the red. But when we do that, there'll be brighter red built into it as well, and then more black like we have around the other roses. So there'll be a lot more black in the composition, which is not a bad thing because the red on black on my hand where my hand is so terribly like scarred from the infection I had it was a tough tough one to do and it didn't take very well um, that's not to say that I couldn't still bang away at it and get it more red than it is it's just that um, I want to do things that are um, in accordance with the rest of the sleeve as this is very clearly attached to the rest of the sleeve and also it is just a matter of fact that the black will go in there better than the red. So, um, double, double reasoning for doing it that way, really. But the hand's going to look a lot better soon, and that'll only be two weeks. Next week, I'm focusing on the neck and the shoulder up here. So, there'll be bright red and more dark, like blackish, coming off the roses. I don't think there'll be any black over here, as there's no roses over there, but... Um, we may extend the, uh, the drop shadow off the eye a bit too, just to kind of give it more of a fleshed out look. There'll be some bright red over in the spider webs, and then, uh, there are thorns under my neck that need to be brought up, or under my chin rather, on my neck, that need to be brought up to the same level. So you can see the difference, and that was about how, how bright the thorns were before, um, if you weren't uh, familiar so often people don't even realize I had thorns under here especially when they were the uh, white and black on black version of the thorns they they looked pretty pretty close to how the, the highlights of my face look except they were a little darker so putting them in yellow and brown was immediately made them more noticeable but they'll be more noticeable once they're brighter and again, the blue tips on the roses were pretty good already, but we'll get into them again and do the same thing. So another session on my neck, my ne never-ending neck journey. <laughs> if, if my journey has been a testament to anything through this world, it's that if a tattooer ever tells you that there's a limit on how many layers you can do on something, 
laugh in his fucking face because that guy has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. My skin on this arm is still in great shape. Same as this arm, believe it or not. And I've had 60 sessions on just this version of this sleeve. The rose sleeve, I think, has been tattooed around 25-ish times by now in all of its iterations. And it's been completely redone at least three or four times over. Everything was multiple pass from the original version of the rose sleeve. It was all three and four passes. Then the full color versions of it has been fully passed several times as well. The entire arm has been passed dozens of times, and it's still in pretty good shape. And the only real scar tissue I have is from the first couple tattoos I had on this arm from going to people who didn't know what the fuck they were doing. There's still the outline you can see of a old mime face from my first sleeve um, on this arm. And then there's some scar tissue on my inner bicep. But truth be told, my inner bicep takes beautifully anyway. And I haven't really gotten any new scar tissue in years. And people think that there's this idea that when you tattoo someone, you just scar them. Like, no matter what you do, they are scarred when you tattoo. That's fucking moron. Like, only morons think this. And if you're a tattooer and you're scarring your client every time you tattoo them, just as a, just as a cause and effect thing, like every time you touch someone, you're scarring them, you need to stop. Because that's not necessary. Like, I don't have much scar tissue. I have chunks of it in different places, but if I was full of scar tissue, none of this work would be healing this easily. Like, I've been tattooed twice in the last two days. I don't even feel like it. Like, none of this is sore, none of it's swollen, right? If you're going over constant scar tissue everywhere, if you're, going, if you're working on scar everywhere, they'd be inflamed and healing like shit and... Um, weeping plasma and all kinds of fucking shit. I know what it's like when we tattoo my knuckles. I'll be showing that to you guys soon again. My knuckles get crazy looking. That's where I have scar tissue. Lots of it. But the rest of me is pretty scar free. So if anyone ever tells you either of those things, that there's a limit on how many layers you can have, <laughs> some fucking binary limit that they just made up in the fucking moment just coughed up some nonsense <laughs> or that when you tattoo someone they're scarred immediately I wouldn't be tattooed by that person they don't know what they're doing and they're probably going to hurt you <laughs> they probably should stop anyway I will uh, be talking to you guys again here next time me and Rick will be back in the armpit slash underarm area we had some slow healing in here and so now we're finally ready to go again. And we should be working straight up in the armpit mostly this time. So that'll be like the 13th session on that armpit. Actually kind of looking forward to getting that little stretch colored in. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Have a great day.